Hey ladies and gentlemen and as promised here is the first review of the underrated video game marathon that I promised like and the first game that I'm going to review of those three video games is also as promised Eco the Dolphin Defender of the Future this is literally one of my favorite video games of all time and it's such an underrated hidden gem because chances are you've likely never played this game. <laughs> you probably never even heard of it in the first place. And it's such a shame because this video game is amazing and it's so underrated. It's, again, as I just said, one of my favorite video games of all time. And this is probably the second time on this channel I'm actually ever reviewing a PlayStation 2 game like the first time I reviewed the PlayStation 2 game was probably when I did a comparison video between Resident Evil 4 Remake and Original, and I still think Original is better, but... Yep, Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future, was originally released on the Dreamcast actually, but because Dreamcast was really the end era for Sega Genesis, two years later it was re-released on the PlayStation 2, which is... The version of the game I have, and the version that most people who have actually played it, that they consider the most definitive version of the game. And again, this game is literally one of the... this game is magnificent, and it's literally one of the most unique games to ever exist, and it's so full of wonder, and... It maybe even is the most beautiful game ever, in terms of looks alone. And in this time of time. Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future, is one of my favorite video games of all time. And it's also one of the most unique games of all time. And it's unlike anything you've ever played, actually. It's unlike most games in the world, actually. First and foremost, it's literally one of the most beautiful, if actually not the most beautiful game ever. You play as a dolphin named Echo and you're under the water the whole time. And it's not like that there are many video games under the water actually. And it's already a real pleasure to just swim around and look at the beautiful ocean. From colorful fish, colorful coral, seafloor, other dolphins, whales, other sea creatures and rocks. Maybe admittedly, my huge love for this game actually stems from my genuine love and passion for oceans and sea creatures, but still, literally, Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future, sometimes feels like an interactive version of the Blue Planet documentary series. I really love the documentary series, by the way, so educational. <coughs> i seen some criticism about the gameplay and controls, but I think it's a matter of preference and getting used to it. Because for me, gameplay and controls are perfect and they play so well. Moving Echo around is so fun and it also feels so realistic. He very much controls like a real dolphin. And because dolphins are mammals, you do have a breathing meter and you do have to jump out of the water occasionally to catch some breath. And this is a really cool attention to detail. The story of the game is simply splendid and it's literally one of my favorite video game stories ever told. And it was actually written by an actual science fiction book writer. No surprise there because this is a science fiction story that could very easily be written in a book format. The story is that aliens, known in this game as the foe, invade Earth and steal various noble traits of dolphins. Don't ask how, just suspend your disbelief, but what it is certain is that without those traits, the state of the Earth is changed. Echo goes through different time periods and different terrible futures to reclaim those traits and restore his own timeline. The first timeline is basically a post-apocalypse under the water where humans and aliens wiped each other out and polluted the oceans and remaining dolphins barely cling to life. And second timeline is the dolphins, I mean it's called dolphins nightmare for a reason and yes, second timeline is the dolphins developed a very advanced futuristic society under the water but also scared humans away 
from the oceans never to return, as well as establish a dictatorial society where lesser dolphins are oppressed by more powerful ones. And finally, third reality where the folk has conquered Earth. Yep, this is super amazing and unique story, and it could easily work amazingly well in a book or movie, as long as you had a director and screenwriter who cared about what they were actually doing. The soundtrack of the game is amazing, and it wonderfully fits with the game's setting and themes. Just listen to some of it. Yep, the music adds so much to the game's atmosphere. The game is very much an adventure game, but it is not quite an action adventure. There isn't really all that much fighting in the game, actually. There is some, but oftentimes you're encouraged to just avoid enemies completely, and plenty aren't even possible to beat. There certainly are times where finding an enemy is unavoidable, but there are times where it's just better to avoid conflict entirely. For people who just want mindless fighting enemies, this certainly would be off-putting and this would likely not be a game for them, but I personally love it in this game. Enemies can range from sharks, who are the most basic enemies in the game, but there are also later evil dolphins in Dolphin's Nightmare stages, as well as plenty of other enemies, many of which you can't actually beat. Like this Mori eel, for example, you just have to escape from him and then the rocks crush him. And there are some boss battles in the game too, like the great white shark being the first, and then there is this giant shrimp, or the leaders of the evil dolphins. The game also can be pretty challenging at times, but that type of difficulty is a perfect example of a difficulty that is very well balanced. It's challenging, but it's totally possible to learn and master. Like for example, the hanging water stages in Dolphin's Nightmare are some of the most difficult stages in the game, but also some of the most fun, unique and awesome. And beating them feels so rewarding. Sometimes it is easy to actually get lost in levels and that admittedly might be off-putting to some people but I actually personally really love it. it. It gives the game far more immersion and also makes the ocean feel so mysterious and you truly feel the situation that Echo is in. Sometimes it can take a while to actually solve some puzzles. If I played the game as a kid I might actually have much easier time solving puzzles, because I remember how as a kid I was actually way quicker at solving puzzles in video games. Maybe because there was no YouTube or online guides to hold your hand? Who knows? I generally though try to avoid using guides in this game, with the exception for this particular level in Man's Nightmare. This level truly is a nightmare, and without a guy it's harder than a maze. But for information on what to do, you generally should blow at crystal shards scattered throughout all the game levels. They can sometimes be slightly misleading though, like in that crocodile boss fight. Shards tells you that you should skewer him with above spikes that fall off, and yes, it can work and if done right, it will kill him in a single hit, but it's actually difficult to hit him with that. I much prefer to just hit him the traditional way, like I beat sharks in this game. The shard doesn't hit you, actually, I mean the shard doesn't actually hint you can do it, but no big deal in grand scheme of things. Masterful game either way. You can also blow at other dolphins who also give you guide what to do, as well as move the story forward. <laughs> Echo the Dolphin Defender of the Future is so underrated and almost so many people don't know about it. Even if you browse through YouTube, there are like very few people talking about it.
Well, but somebody has to, so why not it be me? Because Echo the Dolphin Defender of the Future truly is one of my favorite hero games of all time and it's so unique. Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future is certainly one of the most underrated hidden gems ever and it's literally one of my favorite video games of all time. It's actually in my top four very much so and it's also probably the most unique game to ever exist and it totally deserves a PS4 and PS5 re-release even though it's most certainly will never ever happen but it totally should and if you love oceans then I think this is very much a game for you. If you love adventure games with great stories that, t that take their time then this is very much a game for you and if you want some challenge then I also think it might be a good game for you. That said, if you want just mindless fighting and mindless action and slashy then yeah this is probably not a game for you then. Again though this is one of my favorite video games of all time and I'm so happy to own this PS2 copy. And I am very hesitant to calling any game a masterpiece. I mean there are certainly some that would call a masterpiece but in general I'm very very careful and hesitant to call a game a masterpiece but with Echo the Dolphin Defender of the Future I'll go ahead and call it right now. This game very much is a masterpiece even if a lot of people might actually disagree with me. But, ladies and gentlemen, here is the first magnificent underrated video game that I just reviewed for you. And next underrated video game that I will review for you in a couple of days, it will be another PS2, Knights of the Temple, Infernal Crusade. So, talk to you in that review and see you then. Bye!